Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another DIY project and another pedal video today. Hmm, starting to sound familiar. You know, recently I did a video about this right here, which is the Quaverado from Zeppelin Design Labs. I'll go ahead and link that in the description if you're curious, but this is a DIY uh, tremolo pedal that they create a kit for. Well, I really liked uh, this pedal build. It was really cool. So I got another product of theirs and it's right here. And some of you are saying, wait a minute, that's an Ernie Ball VP Junior. So they actually sell this little module here, they call it the VPM1. And you can put this module into your VP Junior and it turns it into a much more functional volume pedal. Now the VP Junior, as the name would suggest, is a run of the mill volume pedal. In fact, it's probably one of the most popular volume pedals on the market. These sell for about 90 bucks new and they're completely passive. There's no power needed for the VP Junior. And essentially it's just a potentiometer inside here and there's a little system that rigs up a, a string and a spring that go to that potentiometer. And so as you do this, you're just basically turning that potentiometer. Now because it's a passive pedal, there's no boost applied and so therefore you're gonna get just a slight volume drop and a lot of people don't like it for that reason, but yet, for its price and it's pretty rugged, it does have a good following. Now they, these pedals have a side effect. They tend to break, either the string breaks or the pot gets dirty and starts to get scratchy and then when you do this, you get this <laughs> static. They actually sell a replacement string kit and a replacement potentiometer kit. But what Zeppelin has done is saying, hey, instead of just replacing those things and breaking it again and again, replace it once with this and you're all good. Like so many guitarists, I had one of these sitting in the closet with a broken string and I was like, hey, Let's give this a shot. Now, like the other Zeppelin Design Lab product that I built, this one has uh, very clear instructions. I really am impressed by their instructions. Very easy to follow, very well laid out. This one was a little different in that it has a single board and that board had some surface mount components already on it, including the microcontroller was actually already on the board when you get it. But you solder in the rest of the components, including the jacks, the potentiometer, the LED, the um, capacitors and some other stuff that you solder in there. And then um, this does also use Vactrols like the uh, Quaverado over here. And it has you, they have you build the Vactrols from a, an LED and an LDR, which is really actually quite fun. And um, then after you get this whole thing together, the whole module together, you take your, the old module out of your VP Junior and then um, you put, you drop the new one in. And where the old one used a um, string and a potentiometer to control the volume, this one actually has a little magnet that you mount to the top here. I'm sure you're not gonna be able to see that on the video, but there's a little magnet back here. And then it uses a Hall effect sensor, which is essentially a magnetic, um, kind of like a, magnetic field transistor, I guess you'd call it. But as this sensor, as the magnet moves closer and further from the sensor, that's what actually controls your volume. Now, as you're probably guessing, it's no longer passive. It does need power. And you can power it with a standard, uh, you know, boss style power supply like this, or you can get one of these little converters and do it with a battery if you want. There's no internal battery. But if I plug this in here, you'll probably see, oh, it lights up and you see the, the um, LED cycle through a few different colors. And if I push this button, where's the button? Right there. If I push this button, you can see the LED changes a variety of different colors. Now, each one of those colors represents a different volume taper that's gonna control the way it responds to you. Now, um, my favorite was the light blue here. And so that's what I've got it currently set at. So you can see when I pull this out and uh, turn it on, it's gonna automatically go back to that light blue. Now, let's just say um, I liked the green, because I did like several of them, I tried them all out. Let's say the green was my favorite. Then if I wanted to make it so it always defaulted to the green, I just hold this button in for a couple seconds till it flashes. Then the next time it powers on, it should default to the green. Bam. Then of course, if I wanted to go back to my light blue, I would just change to that, hold it again until it flashes, and then the next time I power it up, it's gonna go to the light blue. What are the practical uses of a volume pedal like why would I want one? I've got a volume control on my car, on my guitar. So for instance, you could do a swell. So you could put the volume pedal in the silent position, strum the guitar, and then slowly bring it in and kind of do like a swell. Um, so you don't have that attack of the pick. It would just kind of be almost more like a synthesizer sound and kind of just swell up. You can also use the pedal to do like a faux tremolo. So kind of similar to what we did with the Quaverado over here, we get that chop, chop, chop kind of effect. You could do that by simply strumming a chord or something and doing this kind of a motion and do something very similar.
This volume pedal you can see, like the original, it has an input and output and a tuner out. Now you're saying, what's the tuner out? Well, a tuner out is just a copy of the input signal. So your input signal comes in and then it goes out the tuner out, it's the exact same signal. So it's just like a through signal. So what you would do, the reason they call that a tuner out is you could send that to your tuner. And then when you wanted to tune the guitar, you could just click this back to silence and you tune the guitar, but you'd still have a signal to the tuner to be able to tune your guitar. And then of course, when you're ready, bam, right back in. So that's another way um, that you could use it, but you could also use this as a two amp setup. So you could send one signal to, you could send this signal to one amp and this signal to another amp. And then when you would fade this, only the one amp would fade. <laughs> because it's powered now, they built in a boost circuit. So you can see there's a potentiometer here where you can add, actually add boost to the signal. So unity gain happens, you know, fairly early in the sweep. So a good chunk of this is gonna be boost, but that's really cool if you're doing something where you might be strumming some chords and then you go to a lead line. And for the chords, you might wanna cut it back a little bit. And then when you get to the lead, really rip it open. <laughs> And additionally, another easy thing that you can do with this pedal is just to fade, like at the end of the song, you could strum a chord, have it ringing really loud, and that chord might take, you know, a long time to ring out if you just let it. But if you did that, and then you just sort of, you could fade it out a lot quicker. <laughs> But if you have a broken VP Junior in your closet and you've been thinking, I need to replace that string or replace that pot, just get this VPM1 kit. This makes the pedal so much cooler, trust me. But I can tell you they do offer this in three different options from Zeppelin Design Labs. There's the, the, the Build It Yourself kit, which I believe is $69. They have a pre-built one if you wanna just drop it in yourself, and I think that's like 119. And then they also have a service where you can send in a pedal and they'll mod it for you and send it back. But I think that ends up costing a lot more money, of course, because they're doing the work. Really cool thing that Zeppelin Design Labs has done with this little drop-in module. I really like it. And uh, I give it a big old thumbs up. Guys, if you like what I do on this channel, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. And I'll be back very soon with another video. Thanks for tuning in.